Welcome to the video lecture for Introduction to GPS. The intent of this video lecture is to provide you with a short lecture highlighting some of the key concepts pertaining to GPS. So on that note, let's get going. So GPS, or Global Positioning Systems, is a general term for the navigation system consisting of 24 to 32 satellites that are orbiting the Earth, broadcasting data that allows users on the Earth to determine their spatial position. So GPS was originally intended for military applications, but in the 1980s, the government made the system available for civilian use. So GPS works in any weather condition, anywhere in the world, 24 hours a day, and there are no subscription fees or setup charges to use GPS. So GNSS, or Global Navigation Satellite Systems, is used to define all the satellite positioning systems uh, in the world that are used by various governments or countries. So GNSS is comprised of GPS, which is in the United States, GLONASS in Russia, Galileo in the European, just to mention a few. Uh, your readings will discuss the other countries' satellite systems, but for our purposes, uh, GPS is the most common one that we are going to be dealing with in this class as well as a little bit of gloss mass you should know. So NAVSTAR, which stands for Navigation System with Timing and Ranging, is the GPS satellite constellation created, launched, and operated by the U.S. government. So that's kind of the formal name, NAVSTAR. So the, there are um, navigation that's both used for military and civilian use. There are 24 satellites, six spares. They operate 24 hours a day, as I said, and in all weather. Satellites orbit the Earth every 12 hours, sending a synchronized signal from each individual satellite. And we'll talk about these signals in coming lectures. There are 24 satellites in six orbital planes, which equates to four satellites in each of these orbital planes. And you can kind of see a drawing here uh, on the screen indicating these orbital planes, and they provide accurate positioning, navigation, and timing. So relative location and absolute location, there's a difference. So let's take a look. So relative location is an example as Boise is about 430 miles from Portland, Oregon, 345 miles from Salt Lake City, Utah, and 110 miles from McCall, Idaho. So that's kind of what relative location means. It's relative to other things. Absolute location, on the other hand, is where we know the exact location on that point of Earth, and we're using some kind of coordinate system like latitude and longitude. So this lat long here is the location of CWI's NCAB building. So that's the absolute location. So if you give me that, I will drive exactly to um, NCAB. So, relative versus absolute location. So first we'll look at atomic clocks briefly. And GPS is based on a system that uses time to determine location. So how long does it take for a signal to reach a receiver from a satellite? That's what we're going to deal with in terms of timing. Each GPS satellite has multiple atomic clocks that contribute to very precise time data. And they can determine time with one in 100 billionth of a second. So they're very, very accurate. So the components of a GPS, which you should certainly know. So a GPS is composed of three segments, the space segment, the control segment, and the user segment. And we'll look at each one of these here coming up, but you should definitely know these three segments. So the space segment, which is, consists of these satellites, and these satellites fly about 12,550 miles from the Earth. Don't worry about memorizing that number. In this class, most of these numbers you don't need to know. They're just for reference. So each satellite circles the Earth two times a day. They are arranged, as I mentioned earlier, in six equally spaced orbital planes. They're at this 55 degrees from the equator around the Earth with four satellites in each orbital plane. As of June 2016, there are 31 operational satellites in NAVSTAR, along with a couple of decommissioned ones that stay in orbit. So that's the space segment. 
Next is the control segment. And these are the various locations of the master control station, which is in Colorado, ground antennas, uh, and these monitoring stations that we'll talk about. So the GPS control segment consists of this global network of these ground facilities that track the GPS satellites, monitor their transmissions, perform analyses, and send commands and data to these constellations, which is the satellites. So as I mentioned in the last slide, the master control station is in Colorado, and the master control station generates and uploads navigation messages and ensures the health and accuracy of the satellite constellation. It also receives navigation information from the monitoring stations, utilizes this information to compute the precise locations of the GPS satellites in space, and then uploads this data to the satellite. So in the event of a satellite failure, the master control station can reposition these satellites to maintain an optimal GPS constellation. So it's important to know where these GPS satellites are in the, in the, in the, in the sky. Uh, and so if it gets out of alignment, that satellite will go out of commission because it's not recording correct information. And while it's offline, it can be repositioned back into this orbital plane that it belongs in, and then it can become back online and used for locations. So the data that feeds the master control station comes from monitoring stations. And these monitoring stations track the GPS satellite as they pass overhead and channel their observations back to the master control station. So the master control station is collecting things such as the atmospheric data which we'll talk about uh, later on, like the ionosphere and the troposphere and stuff like that. Range and carrier messages, measurements, which we'll talk about later as well, and these navigational signals. So all these different things it's monitoring and sending back. It's very, very important that we know where these satellites are in the space. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to determine the, the time it takes for this signal to get to the Earth. We're not going to know how far away it is if we don't know exactly what's going on with those satellites. Next is the ground antennas, and they communicate with the space satellite for command and control purposes. They send and transmit data and uploads and collects telemetry. The final is the user segment, which these are the receivers, and these can be these User segments consist of GPS receiver equipment. In this class, we'll be using the Trimble Juno 3B with an image of that on the uh, right of, or the left of your screen, which receives the signals from the GPS satellite and uses this transmitted information to calculate the user's three-dimensional position, that is the latitude, the longitude, and elevation, and it also calculates the time. So the equipment ranges from anything from a smartphone and handheld receivers used by hikers to sophisticated specialized receivers used for high-end survey and mapping applications. So for example, the GPS unit that we use in this class, the Juno 3B, is not going to be nearly as accurate as this survey grade GPS unit that we see in the middle of our screen, in the middle top. Um, when you're kind of doing buildings and grading, you need to know things down to the centimeter accuracy. In our class, we're not going to need to know that. And that goes the same with the smartphone. So accuracy depends largely on the receiver. So it'll have about 10 to 30 meter accuracy for kind of out of the box, most recreational units, five to 10 meter accuracy for most commercial units. And then we could do post processing, uh, which we'll discuss later on to even further improve those measurements. So the users, that is you, you must be able to plan for data collection analysis. You just don't go wing it. You got to have a really understanding of a plan of what data you're going to be collecting and how that data is going to be used in some kind of analysis. And that type of analysis you're going to do really is going to dictate what kind of data that you're going to be collecting. So you have to have a very thorough understanding of this data collection and analysis uh, process. You also must have an understanding of the technology. And that's what I want to do in this class, is I want to really train you to understand the technology, to be able to be users of this technology. And use GPS and GIS technology to plan GPS survey, to go out and collect this data, download data and base station data, 
correct these positions and export this data to GIS. And a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about in the coming lectures, so you'll have a more thorough understanding of what we're talking about. But the key here is kind of using this data in GIS application. Because simply just collecting this data isn't going to be enough to have it just in your GPS unit. You've gone out and collected this data, now you've got to do something with this. And that really use, intends to be kind of either plotting that point, making a map, or doing some kind of analysis. And that's where GIS, Geographic Information Systems, comes into play. So GPS is a, kind of an essential element for the global positioning information infrastructure. So this free, open, and dependable nature of GPS has led to the development of hundreds of applications affecting every aspect of modern life. So GPS technology is now in everything from cell phones and wristwatches to bulldozers, shipping containers, and ATMs. GPS boasts productivity, uh, boosts productivity across the wide swath of economy, including farming, construction, mining, surveying, package delivery, and logistics supply chain management. Major communication networks, banking systems, financial markets, the power grid depend heavily on GPS for precise timing synchronization. Some wireless services cannot operate without it. GPS also saves lives by preventing transportation accidents, aiding search and rescue efforts, and speeding the delivery of emergency services and disaster relief. So GPS is vital to the next generation air transportation systems that will enhance flight safety while increasing airspace capacity. GPS also advances scientific aims such as weather forecasting, earthquake monitoring, and environmental protection. Finally, GPS remains critical to the U.S. national security and its applications for integrity in virtually every facet of U.S. military operations. Nearly all new military assets from vehicles to munitions come equipped with GPS. So as we can see, GPS is a very, very broad and important topic. In our class, we're going to be using it in a much more simple application in terms of collecting data and mapping that data. So on that note, have a great day and talk to you in the next video lecture.